Hello, this is Lady Boulay, and thank you for clicking on the video. Thank you for your support, and thank you for all you do to support this channel. Yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. And ladies and gentlemen, I am remembering the genius of our ancestors, one in particular. George Washington Carver an agricultural scientist known for his innovative work in crop rotation and soil health, significantly improving the livelihoods of farmers in the early 20th century. Not black farmers, all farmers. Watch this. He was born a slave in 1864. He was raised by a German immigrant couple, the Carvers. And he goes to college at Iowa State, gets a degree and a master's in agriculture. And his professors want to become the head of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And he gets a letter from Booker T. Washington asking him to give it all up, come down to Tuskegee. Well, in the South, they grow cotton. Every year you grow cotton, it produces less because it depletes the soil. And so they were suffering. Well, he comes up with hundreds of uses for the peanut because the peanut puts nitrogen back into the soil. And they don't know what to do with the peanut, so he goes into his laboratory and comes up for all these uses, everything from peanut butter to the non-toxic pigments that crayons are made out of. It revolutionizes the entire economy of the South. He even spoke before the U.S. Congress. And the congressman, they left him outside because they, they didn't know who he was. Finally bring him in. They got, well, you got 15 minutes. And he begins to pull out all the things he's made out of the peanuts. And the congressman says, how did you learn all this? He goes, from an old book. What old book? He goes, the Bible. He says, does the Bible tell about the peanuts? He said, no, it tells about the God who made the peanut. I asked him to show me what to do with the peanut. And he did. I want to make a correction. He did not come up with the idea of the peanut butter. The Ghanaians say they created the peanut butter. So let's get that straight because I don't want any mess. Now, if you do a deep dive into who created peanut butter, they will give you four names. Three of them are white and George Washington Carver. Not once do they give the Ghanaians credit, but they say they created it and I'll take their word for it. So back to George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was born into slavery around 1864 in Diamond Grove, Missouri. His mother, Mary, was owned by Moses Carter, who later raised George and his brother after they were kidnapped during the Civil War. After the war, Carver pursued education eventually earning a bachelor's degree in agriculture science in 1894 and a master's degree in 1896 from Iowa State Agricultural College, now Iowa State University. He is best known for his work at Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University, where he taught and conducted research for decades. He developed hundreds of products from peanuts, sweet potatoes, and soybeans, promoting these crops as alternatives to cotton, which had depleted the soil's nutrients due to monocropping practices. Meet George Washington Carver, Born into slavery in 1864, he overcame staggering odds to become a pioneer in agricultural science. While a professor at Tuskegee Institute, he developed techniques to improve types of soils depleted by repeated plantings of cotton. He wanted poor farmers to grow other crops, such as peanuts, soybeans, and sweet potato. As a source of their own food and to improve their own quality of life, his inventions revolutionized agriculture by introducing crop rotation techniques, soil enrichment practices, and creating hundreds of products from these crops, from paints to plastics, contributing significantly to the economic empowerment of farmers. Carver's upbringing, marked by the challenges of post-Civil War racial tensions, fueled his determination to excel in education. Despite facing systemic racism, he went on to become the first African-American to earn a bachelor's degree from Iowa State College. Carver's enduring legacy is a testament to the power of knowledge, resilience, and had a profound impact on agriculture and society that still resonates today. So let's celebrate his tireless pursuit of excellence and his enduring legacy that continues to inspire generations. He published many and sustainable farming. Now we know that coming out of slavery, 
they knew a lot about farming. The ones who had farmed in the South and in the Midwest knew a lot about farming. That was one of the reasons that their towns were destroyed, just like up in Oscarville, where they have Lake Lanier now, and other places. They had come out of the system knowing how to do specialized skills. And from those skills, they were able to build thriving towns. And the white folk got mad every time and destroyed those towns. But it was because they had the knowledge of things that made them successful. George Washington Carver's contributions to agriculture and his advocacy for environmental stewardship earned him widespread recognition. He was celebrated not only within the African-American community, but also by the broader public, receiving numerous honors throughout his life. In 1941, Time magazine referred to him as a black Leonardo due to his diverse talents and achievements. And I guess they're talking about Leonardo da Vinci, the Italian artist, scientist, everything man. Carver passed away on January 5th, 1943. But his legacy continues to influence agricultural practices and education. His childhood home is now a national monument honoring his significant impact on American agriculture and society. George Washington Carver remains a symbol of innovation, resilience, and the transformative power of education in the pursuit of social and economic justice. And just to add on, George Washington Carver was invited by Booker T. Washington in 1896 to join the faculty at Tuskegee. And he accepted, even though he had other opportunities, he took that opportunity because he was in an environment of people like him. He lived in a dormitory room at Tuskegee from 1896 till 1943 when he died. He was modest and very unassuming. Believe it or not, when I first moved to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, my Sunday school teacher was a retired teacher. She was in her 80s, but she had gone to Tuskegee when he was there. And she said that George Washington Carver spoke very softly. He says that She said his voice was softer than Michael Jackson's. He remains a legend at Tuskegee and also a highly respected citizen of the world. So may this ancestor continue to rest in peace. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.